volunteers abroad uh, are not really welcoming uh, when they see some visible features of Roma identity, uh, they do not really help. Um, yes, and we can see that in Moldova, uh, people were put in the most horrific uh, um, conditions. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, more than 10 million have now fled their homes in Ukraine because of the Russian invasion. Of these, many belong to the Roma community who are facing intense discrimination, both at the borders and at shelters. Many Roma are being denied humanitarian aid. Some are not allowed to evacuate, often forced to pay bribes and segregated at train stations. In Hungary, Roma were refused food and denied access to some shelters because they were labelled economic migrants. They were also denied transportation, medical checkups and humanitarian aid. Some had no alternative but to return to Ukraine because of this discrimination. Natalia Tomenko is a Ukrainian Roma refugee currently staying in Budapest in Hungary with some members of her family. She's an artist and founder of a Roma youth organisation which is providing help to families still stuck in Ukraine and she joins me now. Good afternoon to you, Natalie. Hello, thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I wanted to ask you first, if I may, about your experiences when you escaped Ukraine and, and how you fared. Uh, well, it's been uh, several weeks ago. It was the ninth day of the war when my family decided actually to separate in order to survive. And uh, my father drove across whole Ukraine around 40 hours by car in order to take us, his children, abroad. So me, my sister, sister-in-law and small niece, just women and kids right now can cross the border. Mm. My mom didn't want to go because she couldn't leave father. So they're still back in Ukraine, are they, your parents? Yes, all my family and all extended family, all friends are there. Just few cousins managed to escape. That must be very tough for you, I'm, I'm imagining. It is. And so in terms of your experience as you were leaving, did you suffer discrimination because you're Roma? Well, it's been several times during my life. Uh, I mean, even before the war, I faced with discrimination at the work, in school, uh, everywhere. I mean, even though right now during the war, when I had a speech on OEC uh, in Vienna on the public with diplomats, uh, later on my speech was published uh, on the media and in where in Facebook people... Um, express the hate speech and anti-Gypsyism um, comments mm. towards me, publicly. What, what kind of toll does that take on you, Natalie? Can you repeat again? I couldn't hear you. I just asked, what kind of impact does that have on you, that, that hate speech? Right now, not, not much impact, because I have another priorities right now in my life, because the most important to survive the most important to keep my family alive, as much as many as possible Ukrainian people to keep alive. Hate speech, it was, it, it is, it will be. So, and, so sorry, t tell us about what you're doing to try and help, because I know you're trying to help other Roma people who are being subject to discrimination at the border as they try and flee Ukraine. Yes, uh, so my organization, ARCA, uh, before the war, we used to be a um, youth organization for Roma youngsters. We uh, organized uh, several educational programs. But uh, when the war started, we decided to help our community. And what we are doing right now is that we are providing financial support to Roma and Roma families to find themselves uh, in difficult situations due to hostilities in different parts of Ukraine for the purchase of food, medicine, and basic hygiene products. Also, we are coordinating financial and organizing evacuation process for civilians, in particular for women and children and those elderly who survived Roma genocide during the Second World War. And we are collecting and purchasing humanitarian aid for frontline cities and sending packages to the hotspots. All this is happening due to a huge network of our partners and colleagues mm. around the world. And, and what kind of stories are you hearing from people who are coming to your charity for help? 
Uh, well, what I can hear is that um, volunteers abroad uh, are not really welcoming uh, when they see some visible features of Roma identity, uh, they do not really help. Um, yes, and we can see that in Moldova, uh, people were put in the most horrific uh, um, conditions. Mm. Natalie Tomenko, thank you very much for for joining us and telling us about your charity, ARCA, and what you've been doing to try and help Roma fleeing the war. Thanks very much. Mm-hmm.